Hello and welcome to SumSub, a channel about how to survive in the online jungle. My name is Bradley and this is a humble chemistry teacher, Walter White, aka Heisenberg. And he's a terrifying killer and drug dealer. But let's conduct a little thought experiment. What if Walter White had lived in an alternative reality where Bitcoin existed? How would he have laundered his 80 million US dollars? So, first off, we need to calculate how much money the character Walter White actually had. So, in the series, we see how he actually buries eight 55-gallon barrels of hard cash in the New Mexico desert. By the way, if you enter the exact coordinates shown in the episode into your GPS, they'll actually point to a film studio in Albuquerque. Now, this is actually a precaution against Sirius's fans who might decide to go and look for the treasure, but they'll eventually die in the vastness of the New Mexico desert. Now, in the series, Walter White sells crystal meth for 60 US dollars a gram. Now, this price is quite reasonable, especially for higher quality meth. But how did Walter White pile up these barrels of cash? Can you really earn so much money by selling meth? I mean, how was the whole process organized? So there were actually some criminal experts that watched this series and they found this model quite realistic. Let's actually take a closer look at one of the trades that takes place. In the fifth season, specifically in the episode Hazard Pay, White actually sells a 50 pound batch of top quality blue meth. So it's time to calculate. 50 pounds is approximately 22 kilograms or 22,000 grams. With a price of 60 bucks per gram, the trade brings White 1,320,000 US dollars. We don't know how many of these trades he made throughout the five seasons, but the amount of meth we see in the series is definitely enough to make up that pile of cash that we see. Now in the final episodes of the series, we learn that Walter White actually has a smidgen over about 80 million US dollars. So when Walter begins to earn more and more cash, he realizes that he can't spend the money without attracting the attention of the IRS. So he decides to launder the money. But the traditional approach doesn't quite work. Let's see why. So when Walter's wife discovers he's become involved in the drug trade, she volunteers to actually help him launder this money. So this is how the family acquires a front company, a car wash to be specific. These types of services are widely used for money laundering, probably because of the correlation between expenditure and income is less direct when compared to the production or trade industries. For example, you couldn't exactly use a car dealer because they can't sell more cars than they buy from the manufacturer, right? Ultimately because the audit will easily detect fraudulent activity. So long story short, any business where you can over-report the transaction volume works for a front company. Now, this term money laundering probably originated from the American gangster Al Capone. Now, this is because the Chicago Mafia used to use a network of laundromats to legalize this illicit money, hence the term money laundering. So, Walter and his wife get these car receipts falsified to make it look like they had way more customers than they actually did. Then, the drug money is deposited to the bank account as payments for thousands of car washes that never actually happened. Without a large-scale investigation, no one could ever predict the actual number of customers that they had. In one episode, Skylar actually mentions that the company washes 19 cars per hour. Let's calculate how much drug revenue can actually be laundered through their sham business model. To find average prices for car washing in the US, I took into account 2016 statistics. And it's obvious that these numbers aren't very accurate, but given an approximation, they'll give us a ballpark figure. In the US, the average price for a car wash is around $15. So we multiply 19 car washes an hour by $15, and then we get our total of $285 per hour. So let's assume that said car wash works from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., i.e. 16 hours a day. Well, it gives us around $4,560 per day to launder. So if we work seven days a week, we can assume that over a year, we'll be able to launder around $1,664,400 US dollars. Thank God I'm reading that off of the screen. <laughs> so as you see here, Walter had way too much money to launder through the car wash. There is no 
car wash in the world that could do this kind of business. Traditional money laundering schemes only work to such an extent, right? Impossible to explain numbers are, well, impossible to explain. That's why Walter ends up burying his 80 million US dollars. Now, the first Bitcoin was mined in 2009. All five seasons of Breaking Bad take place in the early 2000s, when cryptocurrency wasn't exactly widespread. But what would have happened if Walter decided to launder his 80 million through Bitcoin? Time for a small disclaimer. First of all, we're making an unrealistic assumption that Bitcoin would have been as developed back then as it is today. But it's an alternative reality, you know. And secondly, you and I perfectly understand that crypto is not just for criminals. Statistics show that it's actually attracting more and more of these law-abiding citizens. 18% of Americans have already purchased crypto. Even popular retailers like uh, Amazon and Starbucks are starting to accept Bitcoin as a payment method. However, the decentralized and semi-anonymous nature of crypto makes it really attractive for criminals as well. Let me show you a couple of diagrams. By the way guys, all of this data is real and was collected by the world's leading blockchain analysis firm, Chainalysis. Now the orange colored segments relate to the volume of illicit money sent. The yellow ones, well they're for the money that was received. The red line is the trend. Now you can see that between 2017 and 2018, there's actually a small decrease in the amount of illicit cryptocurrency that's being sent and received. But in 2019, it's clear that someone added their barrels full of hard cash into the flow. However, illicit financial flows still make up only a small share of all cryptocurrency activity at just 1.1%. So let's say that Walter White digs up his money. He then needs to convert this whole sum into Bitcoins. So how is he going to do this? Well, step one, he needs to buy the Bitcoins. The exchange rate for Bitcoin is always fluctuating, but let's use the rate of 60,000 US dollars for one Bitcoin. Now, 80 million US dollars divided by 60,000 US dollars only gives us a mere 1,333 Bitcoin. By the way, the first time someone used Bitcoin as a payment method was on May the 22nd, 2010. In Florida, a programmer bought two pizzas for 10,000 Bitcoins. If we were to look at today's prices, these would actually be the most expensive pizzas in the world. 11 years down the line, the converted price is just shy of around 600 million US dollars. Now, the hitch is that Walter wouldn't risk buying Bitcoins on the exchange directly. He'd probably have to find a private person or some kind of criminal entity that needs cash and that has this 1,333 Bitcoin in the bank. Now, hopefully, Walter's rich, fast criminal networking in the United States and Mexico would come in handy. Step two, with these Bitcoins in hand, Walter has several options. First of all is the crypto exchanges. The diagram on screen shows $2.8 billion worth of transactions in Bitcoin from criminal entities to exchanges. Now, a little more than 50% of these went to the top two, Binance and Huobi. These numbers may probably come as a surprise. I mean, how could Binance and Huobi, the two largest exchanges following KYC guidelines, receive so many Bitcoins from criminal sources? I'll tell you how. Now, KYC, otherwise known as Know Your Customer, is an obligatory procedure for banks and exchanges that work with individuals. A person's identity must be verified before executing a financial transaction. As for our cautious drug lord, well, I'm sure that he'd never work directly with the exchanges, especially with those that like to verify identities. So to whom would he give his 80 million US dollars? To answer that question, let's see who's standing behind the bank accounts. Let's take a look at this diagram. These three columns are of particular interest to us. Now, there's actually a small group of accounts that are harvesting most of the illicit Bitcoin that is being sent to Binance and Huobi. The 810 accounts took a total of 819 million in Bitcoin from criminal sources. This represents 75% of the total flow. So who are the whales driving this activity? Well, they're the so-called OTC brokers or mediators. Don't want to be spotted? Well, they'll help you out. OTC stands for over-the-counter, and it's a form of trading in which the seller and the buyer deal directly, completely bypassing the exchange. The problem is that while most OTC brokers run these legitimate businesses, some of them actually specialize in providing, well, money laundering. <laughs> and this is all servicing criminals, obviously. Now, the OTC brokers usually have lower KYC requirements than the exchanges that they're operating on. Here's a typical scheme that Walter might be very likely to choose. 
So starting from the left of this diagram, we can see these funds from a criminal entity that are moving through the intermediary wallet, and then to these two OTC brokers. The OTC brokers then move the funds to Huobi, most likely to be converted into cash or fiat. Oh, by the way, fiat is the money that we use in everyday life. For instance, bills, coins, as well as the funds in bank accounts. These might be in dollars, euros, or yen, etc. The chain always has numerous links, and the money never goes from the criminals directly to the exchanges. Also, look how many transactions there are taking place between these accounts. Criminals execute multiple transactions to one another to basically fool this blockchain analysis. Another way to cover your tracks is to use Bitcoin mixers. People believe that Bitcoin is basically fully anonymous and untraceable, and this is really far from the truth. I mean, yes, Bitcoin is anonymous, unless someone links your wallet to your name. That's why mixers are widely used. And a mixer is usually a kind of website or software that takes in the coins and then mixes them with many others. And the mechanism here is pretty simple. The site takes in crypto from many people and then mixes Bitcoins with the help of algorithms before sending them back to different wallets. Needless to say, no one complies with KYC regulations and no one requires any documents. So let's move on to the last step, step three. Now Walter White is faced with a new dilemma. After converting his crypto into fiat, he's got two options. He can A, continue covering his tracks with the help of shell companies, or B, find someone who can transfer money to his bank accounts using sham contracts for non-existent services. The latter is obviously a bit better. Now, the main challenge here is to find service contracts totaling $80 million. Now, Felina. The last Breaking Bad episode is actually called Felina. Now, on top of being an anagram for finale, it's actually an acronym made up of the chemical elements Fe, which is iron, Li for lithium, and Na for sodium. Now, this all together stands for blood, meth, and tears, which is pretty cool, right? What can the crypto industry do about OTC brokers and money laundering? You might ask, why is money laundering even a problem? It isn't murder or drug dealing, is it? Well, the thing is, if criminals had no chance to withdraw money and cash out from an illegal activity, then there'd be really little incentive to commit any crimes at all, which in turn would decrease crime rates and significantly improve the reputation of the crypto market. People don't tend to believe that cryptocurrency is a very regulated space. And there is some truth to that, because most countries don't have proper policies, the necessary experience, or the regulatory tools. However, there are still measures in place to combat money laundering. In the real world, banks investigate your transactions, and we can do the same for virtual ones. I've already showed you how to investigate blockchain transactions, identify suspicious accounts, and collect data on money laundering methods. But meanwhile, exchanges could also investigate their OTC brokers and other agents operating on their platforms more thoroughly. Most major exchanges, including Huobi and Binance, already follow KYC requirements, which is obligatory for most jurisdictions. But let's go back to Walter White. What happened to him? Did he go to the Bahamas or lie on the beach with a margarita? Well, here Walter made a critical mistake. One of the OTC brokers turned out to actually be an undercover FBI agent. And this technique is actually quite popular to solve crimes both in the world of fiat and in the crypto world. Now, Walter was imprisoned, but unfortunately he didn't serve his full time and he got his cancer back very quickly and died. And by the way, if you Google www.savewalterwhite.com, you'll see that Walter White has his own online donation website and it's still up and running. And this isn't actually a scam. The donate button actually redirects you to the page of the AMC TV channel. This is the one that created this wonderful and instructive series. The show's creator Vince Gilligan liked to say, if there's a larger lesson to Breaking Bad, it's that actions have consequences. 